Hey, my name is Javi, and we're taking a look at the unique toys Challenger. And Challenger is the perfect name for this figure because this thing challenges my patience. I'm just kidding, I love this thing. This guy is a third-party version, which means it's not officially sanctioned by Hasbro or Takara, of the Age of Distinction and or Last Night Optimus Prime design. If there's any differences between those two designs, I don't care. I still haven't watched any of those movies and don't want to, but I still really like this design. As I previously mentioned in my Voyager class Last Night Optimus Prime review, with the creation of this copyright infringing figure, unique toys may be breaking the law, but at least they ain't breaking my heart. This robot mode is amazing! Excellent! representation of an already excellent design. The painting is clean and the mechanical detailing is fantastic. Although it could use a good coat of dry brushing to really bring out those details, and I'm aware that another third-party Knight Optimus Prime, Toy World Knight Orion, has exactly that, and my god, that kind of makes this guy look bad, doesn't it? <laughs> Which it isn't, but it's not completely perfect. When you compare Challenger to the CGI model, you notice he's a bit blocky, he's not as rounded or organic as I would like him to be. He's also got these calf muscles that are a bit oversized, but hey, I can relate. This figure is not 100% movie accurate, but if I cared, I would have watched the movie, right? It looks great as its own thing, and at least all the essential details are accounted for, including the ones on the back. This is one of the few Masterpiece-style Transformers that I've looked at in recent years that looks good from every angle. Say it with me now. Back. Lives matter! But apparently hand lives don't? For some weird reason, the fingers on this figure are not painted, which I wouldn't mind normally, but it's such a weird contrast with the body, which is beautifully painted. And it's not like they had to worry about paint chipping either, because all the paint here, from my experience, is extremely durable. The entire figure is durable, despite a critical problem I experienced out of the box. The shoulder is attached with this soft ratchet, and when I tried to rotate the shoulder for the first time, it felt a bit tight. In all my infinite wisdom, I assumed it was a tight shoulder ratchet. So I kept twisting and twisting and twisted the whole arm off. The connecting screw here tore right off. It had been screwed in too tightly. So if you get this figure and rotate the shoulder and notice that the screw isn't turning with the arm, that's bad news. I gotta give a shout out to Rob from TF Source, not sponsored, for sending me a new shoulder part. I've had this figure for about a month after the fix. He's even been through a few tumbles. Ah, even after that, it's all good. Nothing has broke since. In fact, I could barely get my hands off of this thing. This is winged dragon levels of touchy-feely. You know I put my dick on this shit, boy. He's got a nice heft, thanks to some die-cast metal parts. Mostly internal. My cold touch technique is not picking up anything on the armor, but you do get a good feel on the spine. Even after a wiggle test, everything holds together fairly well. Even better than some official releases. No excuse. But I will give it to Takara. They understand that a ball joint at the head should be the standard for Masterpiece-style Transformers. Challenger's only got a swivel and can look up and down. The head sculpt itself is beautiful. You could even replace the mask with his ape face. Keep the mask on, buddy. And you're telling me the head sculpt could get even better? This alternate head sculpt is set to come out with Unique Toy's next project, Dragoon. Their version of the last night Megatron and Damn, it looks nuts! Unique toys, I absolutely give you my consent. Alright, let's calm down, keep it in my pants. I can. And unlike my beloved Masterpiece Beast Wars figures, you can turn off the lights whenever you want. Which means, if you want it, you can display this guy with his eyes lit up forever. But I don't recommend you waste your batteries not included. These super tiny LR521 batteries were a nightmare to install. But whatever you do, do not use a screwdriver to feed the batteries in there. The LED chip is exposed, and I'm pretty sure screwdrivers, at least my screwdrivers, have slight magnetic properties. You see where I'm getting? Getting out of here? Yeah, my short circuit the thing. Why come to this seemingly complicated conclusion? Well, if you want to replace this head with the included alternate head, you're gonna have to unscrew it. But I have to spoil the transformation a bit to access it. Forgive me. And the light up feature on my Nemesis Prime head was busted because yeah, I fed the batteries in there with a screwdriver. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm kinda retarded. Again, thank you Rob from TF Source for putting up with my bullshit. So when I got my alternate, alternate head, I fed the batteries in with my DX9 give old parts separator. I'm glad I waited for a replacement head, cause wow! The light-up feature is amazing and it would be a damn shame if Dragoon didn't have one.
Shit! And let's not forget about his other accessories. You get a hand blade, plugs into his hand, and that pairs well with the nemesis head for reasons. Forgive me. No! You get a knife, and Challenger can hold that, but from what I know, this is an accessory meant for the Unique Toys Peru kill, which is their version of the Age of Extinction lockdown. Looks equally as impressive, and I pre-ordered it coming soon. You also get a wand? At least I think that's what this is. I've seen it referred to as a wand, and you could put the wand in the chest, because as we all know, magic is stored in the tits. And you get what I assume is the big version of the wand. Big wand. Looks like an impressive staff in Challenger's hands, but in my hands... Oh, the power! Ah! Give me a GF! Like the other weapons, the sword plugs into his hand. Now this is a sword. Get that limp dick Cheeto out of here. Very nice detail here. It's clear that a lot of love went into the sword. And the shield is equally nice. The shield opens up to reveal a gun. And if you flip this out, you can store the sword and this whole assembly on the back. He looks excellent with weapons in hand. And it's a good thing this figure has the articulation to make them shine. As shown in this included card stats on the back. Rotation at the shoulder. Be cautious, of course. Butterfly joint. Hinge joint at the shoulder pad. Allows the arm to move out, ball joint at the shoulder thingy, swivel here, bend at the elbow, another bend, elbow pad hinge joint, hinge joint here, wrist swivel, hinge joint, hinge joint, hinge joint, at the thumb, hinge joint, hinge joint, hinge joint, at the index finger, and the hinge joint, hinge joint, hinge joint, on the rest of his fingers. Waist swivel, ab crunch, that actually keeps its position, hinge joint, shifting hips, which allows for a kick, butt flaps on a hinge joint, allows the leg to move back that far, hinge joint at the side skirts, and this hinge is spring loaded, which is not my favorite. Kinda gets in the way of the beautiful spread, thigh swivel, bend at the knee, toe bend, beautiful pivot, and unfortunately no up and down movement at the ankle. That somewhat limits posability, but not by much. You can still get some fantastic poses out of this guy. And I'm also digging how big this guy is. Hey, here's Masterpiece MP44 Optimus Prime, my previous review, the Masterpiece Bumblebee 2.0, Voyager Class Last Night Megatron, and Voyager Class Last Night Optimus Prime. This is not a fair comparison. Voyager Class Optimus Prime is not even a challenger to challenger. This guy does a great job at hiding away all the truck bits. Do you see a truck in here? I don't see a truck in here. Where is it? Where is it? The only real bits of kibble in this mode are at the bottom of the feet so you'll never see them. And the nose of the truck at the arms. But you wouldn't have known that if I didn't tell you, huh? Swivel this all the way around. Get that shoulder thingy into position. Same with the other arm. Flip up the head. Open the chest. Flip this out. And pull everything out. Flip these out. That's important. Reorient these panels. Pull this out. Unfold it all the way. Plug that in. Same on the other side. Fold these back. And join the arms. Pull this out. And that gives you clearance to fold up this assembly. Pull these out, all the way out, fold the head down, and fold this assembly all the way up. You want this tab to snap into here, so you rotate those panels, and they snap in. Fold these up, and make sure they snap into place. And we're done with the front of the truck. Onto the legs. Fold this assembly all the way up, rotate the legs all the way around, shift those hips, fold up the side skirts, flip the crotch, untab the calf, untab the inner leg. That releases this whole assembly. Fold this back up, lift this panel, unfold all of that. Same on the other side. Plug the thighs together, plug in the back of the truck. Keeps things nice and stable for the next part. Unfold the feet. Lift up the grill. Turn that. Spin this around. Slide this forward. Fold up the feet. Swing this assembly. That plugs into here. Plug in the completed side of the truck. Join the tabs here and here. All of the same steps on the other side. And make sure those panels join in the front. Give it a little squeeze to make sure everything's plugged in. And that wasn't as hard as you expected, was it? The transformation here is surprisingly smooth and pleasant. And it results in what I can only describe as Black Magic Incarnate. There is zero indication that this was Optimus Prime a few minutes ago. That is until you look at the underside of the truck, but even then, this is one of the cleanest vehicle mode undersides I think I've ever seen. That gap's a little weird though. Oh, look what I found in here. Shit! How the hell is Takara Tomy, a large, very profitable corporation, being outdone by a bunch of random basement-dwelling Chinamen? Third-party companies in general are doing what Hasbro and Takara won't. Have you guys even seen some of the stuff that's coming up? Unique Toys Dragoon, Toy World Freedom Leader, Toy World Grinder, Transcraft Bumblebee, Unique Toys Age of Extinction Galvatron? I could care less about Age of Extinction Galvatron, I hate that design, but the engineering is so impressive that I I want it. Why are these third-party companies using their black magic for these movie designs? Oh.
China, you smart, but your taste in movies is still shit. The truck mode features an opening door gimmick, and just like Masterpiece Bumblebee, this guy doesn't have a real interior. But unlike Masterpiece Bumblebee, these doors don't affect the transformation engineering at all. If you really needed opening doors on your vehicle modes, this is how you do it. Take notes, Takara. Not those kind of notes, please. Rest in peace, Zeta Toys Core Star. The only thing that's truly missing from this truck mode is that sculpted an Autobot symbol. For obvious copyright reasons, it couldn't be included. I can't be too mournful. The truck mode itself holds together extremely well. All the tabbing that you saw in the transformation works perfectly. And thanks to a set of rubber tires, he rolls flawlessly. The truck bed is a bit gappy, not much better than MP44, but you could cover it up with the sword and shield. I don't like how loose the trailer hitch is, but plug the pommel into the diamond and problem solved. Just like the robot mode, I have a hard time keeping my hands off this thing. He is an enjoyably thick and big truck. Here's MP10 Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Megatron, and Prime again. It surprises me how similar these vehicle modes are. A testament to Unique Toy's brilliant engineering, but he doesn't have side mirrors. You're out of 10. This figure set a new standard for me. Impossible is no longer part of my vocabulary when it comes to Transformers. Needless to say, Unique Toys Challenger is worth every penny. Pick your favorite color and have fun. As for you, Takara, you betray me, you didn't keep your promise, and I don't care anymore. Yes, that was a The Room reference. I love that damn movie. And you know what else is a Room reference? That's right, Red Dress, my musical tribute to that film. Go check it out, links in the description. Please help me get my music career off the ground. I'm fed up with this fucking website. So sexy in that red dress.